Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with www.learnvisualstudio.net and in this lesson I wanted to talk about adaptive layout. This kind of takes the conversation that we started with in the previous lesson uh, to a higher level. In the previous lesson we talked about the nuts and bolts of actually using the Visual State Manager and adaptive triggers to change attributes of objects in our XAML based on screen size. So now we want to talk about uh, kind of at a higher level the patterns that you might follow or the general thought process behind an adaptive layout. Again, adaptive layout super critical to the Universal Windows Platform story where we build one code base and we can use it across multiple form factors. So uh, I found a very creative example that illustrates this idea very well on Wintelex blog. So this gentleman by the name of Jeff Procise, who I highly esteem and respect, came up with this example. And let me put this uh, URL on, on screen right now here. Uh, came up with this great example of what I'm talking about in this article, using adaptive triggers to build adaptive UIs in Windows 10. And uh, in the body of this lesson, he kind of, or this article, he kind of outlines this uh, Contoso cookbook example. So I, I took that idea and ran with it. And uh, I've created a little news style application that has uh, an image of my cat, some information about Mr. Tibbles, and some lorem ipsum text uh, that, uh, that we'll use. And, and the, really the core of this, again, is the visual states that have been defined for a wide layout and a narrow layout in this case. And so let's look at this in action. First of all, let's look at it on um, on the on uh, whoops on our local machine, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, so you can see we're in the wide layout right now, and we have a photo and a headline. I haven't spent a lot of time designing this, uh, and two uh, two paragraphs of text. Now, as I resize the application, notice that it goes from three columns to just one column and now I can scroll down and read everything about Mr. Tibbles if I knew Latin and if this was actually about Mr. Tibbles. Uh, but hopefully you get the idea how we dramatically change the layout of our content based on the screen width. Now let's see this at play and how it actually uh, works inside of the, the phone emulator. So let me change there to the mobile emulator, the four inch, have it deploy out there really quickly. And you can see, in this case, we just get that single column view. Now, how does this all work? Well, let's take a look at the actual code that makes this happen. First of all, it starts off with a series of stack panels that hold the content. So I have my first stack panel, second stack panel, and third stack panel. And notice the names that I gave them first, which contains the image of Mr. Tibbles and the text block. The second, which just contains that first paragraph of lorem ipsum and then the third stack panel which contains some more lorem ipsum. Now by default you can see that uh, what am I doing here? I'm setting their yeah the the rows and, and everything I set them to are kind of irrelevant because that's going to be set here in the visual state manager. So I have two visual states again, the wide state and the narrow state. Whenever we're in the wide state, we're going to utilize uh, all three columns that have been defined. And then we begin to put each of our stack panels inside of a specific row and column. So we put the first stack panel in row zero, column zero. We put the second stack panel in row zero, column one. And then we put the third in row zero, column two. Furthermore, we set the column span to one. So in other words, we don't want any of our stack panels to span more than one column. Makes sense. And so that's how we get that wide layout um, that, we, uh, that we saw as we ran the application originally. So that is this layout, one column, two columns, three columns, all right? But when, whenever we shrink the state or the size of the window below 800, we fall into the territory of the narrow visual state. So the trigger here is 800. And when we hit that minimum width of 799, we're now into our narrow state. And we begin to change the grid row and column 
for each of our stack panels. The first, second, and third stack panel are now all set to the same, uh, the same column, just different rows. Furthermore, for each of the stack panels, we set its column span to three. So take the entire width, the, all the columns, as the width of your content. And, uh, and so that's how we get the effect whenever we then resize. Now we're taking each of the stack panels. This is the first stack panel. And we're spanning three columns. And here's our second stack panel. We're spanning three columns. And our third stack panel, we're spanning three columns. OK, so hopefully you get the idea of what's possible and the layout that uh, changes that we can accommodate based on screen size. Now again, I want to emphasize something I said previously. I don't know that there are any specific guidelines regarding what you should do for um, the, the, the various adaptive triggers in your application. It's really up to you and the layout of your specific application. What you can do is take a look at the stock applications in Windows 10, both on the desktop and on the phone. So if you take a look here on our news app on the desktop, uh, we still ha we have our hamburger navigation. We have our search fields here at the top. There's this little edit uh, button here on the top bar as well. There is, uh, we can expand some things, okay? So you get the general idea, right? Let's take a look at the news app then inside of uh, the phone. All right, same stories, same hamburger navigation. Uh, notice that some of the icons might be a little bit different. Notice that the edit icon here is at the, the bottom instead of the top. Uh, so we could accommodate that. Uh, based on what we've learned, okay, this listing is in a is in a list as opposed uh, in a um, in a vertical list as opposed to uh, kind of um, well, I guess this isn't a vertical list too. It just has multiple columns, okay. So you can see how adaptive layout works in in the stock applications in Windows. So I guess the moral of the story is this: you have the tools to make your application change form however that makes sense for your application you get to decide the breakpoints you get to decide what layout changes need to happen it's all up to you uh, and perhaps that's where you need to for your specific type of application you can take a cue from obviously the news app or the other apps that are bundled with windows uh, but beyond that there's not a lot of guidance so you want to choose carefully you want to test um, and and think logically what would make sense if I'm holding it versus I'm clicking on it with a mouse versus if I'm sitting you know back in my couch scrolling through or working with the application okay and and how would I want the the UI to change based on those layouts okay so that's the notion of adaptive layout and something that we're going to add to a few of our applications coming up all right, so uh, let's continue on. Uh, we're going to look at a few more concepts before we begin to depart from the more educational aspect of this and more into the actual hands-on, let's build real apps, uh, which comes in the second half of the series. So uh, hang in there. You're doing great. We'll see you in the next lesson. Thanks.